Okay, so you've got your movies, they're on the SD card. And as I just said, we've got to do this right, because here's the thing. I'm going to take this SD card, after you get your movies off of it, I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to put it back in the camera, so that the next person can use the camera after you. This creates a very serious problem, that if you don't do this step right, and you ruin your footage, and you don't figure that out until after I've erased the card, you're in trouble. Right? That could be very, very, very frustrating, to say the least. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we get this little card and we, we, um, we get the movies off of it correctly. Now, all you've got to do to put the uh, movies, or at least get it started, all you've got to do to get this little guy in here, if you've got an SD card, right on the side of the computer there's a little SD slot. Label faces you, and you just push it in there. And then what you're going to see is right here on the desktop, you're going to see this little Canon card pop up right there. I'm going to double click on that. I want to show you a couple things about this so that you kind of have a sense of what's going on and what we need to do. <clears throat> every camera is very different, and every manufacturer does things a little differently. So this makes my job very hard. If you, can, if you just use my cameras, we're set. However, some of you may use a different camera. So, Julia, when her camera died and the battery was dead, she had to go to a tape camera, a tape-based camera. Well, you can't do what I'm going to show you today with a tape-based camera. Some of you might have a high-def camera. Does anybody in here have a high-definition def, high video camera that you're using? Yes? Okay, you're using it. This may be a little different for you as well because they're different formats. Um, <clears throat> does it have a removable card? Um, yeah. <coughs> you just okay, that's, that may or may not work. We'll have to see. Um, hopefully you don't erase everything that's on the card because some of the high definition camera cards, you have to keep the files where they are in the card. So I need the card, but maybe not. <clears throat> Do you have them with you today? I yeah, good. We'll take a look at them really quickly, and I'll know very quickly. Um, but anyway, this is the structure of most of the standard definition cards. You can see it's got a series of folders, miscellaneous, private, and then SD video. The, obviously, the SD video is something that we want. If you see a folder on there that says DCIM, DC, I don't know what the I, I think IM stands for images, but the DC stands for digital camera, and the IM stands for images, that is a folder where you put still photographs. So we can ignore that too. It's not on here, but you can take stills with these video cameras a lot of times. I don't know why you'd want to. It's really low quality stills, but you can. Um, <clears throat> and, well, we just ignore them. So in the SD card, you have this MGR info, and there's just two oddball files in there. That's uh, like data for the camera. But then in the PRG01 or any PRG thing, we have a series of files. These are our video files. Now, <clears throat> doing things in digital video like we do makes some things easier and other things harder. For some people, this is a little abstract. Okay, it's just like this file and it's mov005.mod. That's not my movie. Well, yeah, it is. You're just gonna have to trust me on that and you're gonna see it in a second. <clears throat> but anyway, these files are MPEG-4 files, and MPEG-4 is a video compression system. So what it is, is in order to keep, because you're recording to a, a flash card, the camera compresses these videos on the fly, okay? In order to keep the file size small, it has to compress them. The problem with compression is you do lose a little bit of quality. Not a lot, but a little bit of quality don't really have much option. The good thing about tape cameras is you don't really lose any quality. There's not really a compression system on there. But the file sizes are huge when you deal with tape stuff. So you have a trade-off either way. Either way, you have to convert the video because the video that is on the camera natively does not work in Final Cut Pro. We have to convert the information to something that Final Cut Pro can see. But first, we're going to make a copy of these files, just in case. Okay? So, 
You guys have set it up so that your capture scratch is on the hard drive, right? And then you also have this um, media students file here. See that? Okay. And I have a media staff is where my file is. But on the media students file, you have your, your folders. What you're going to do, <coughs> you're going to find your folder, and you're going to create a new folder called backups or movie backups, OK? Uh, so let's see here. So let me just do this in my folder. So I'm going to have to go to staff. <clears throat> oh, I already have film backups. So I created a folder here called film backups. And then I'm going to create another folder in here that's going to be project one. And I, you know, just to keep them organized. Now here's a problem. I don't like, in any way, shape, or form, the way these cameras save their files because they do it in a very odd way. You'll see it starts at MOV00A and then it goes 001, 002, 00, and you'll find the more footage you shoot, you know, I, don't, I don't understand how it does it. There must be an organizational scheme somewhere, but it'll just start going MOV0BE. MOV0052 is in the next shot, and then MOV0A2. I mean, it's like it does these weird things with the files, and I, I don't like it because here's the problem. It cycles through them pretty quickly, and once it reaches its finished, like its top number of combinations, it starts over again with the file name. So here's the problem. <clears throat> if I shoot, let's say I shot tonight, or this weekend, and I got a bunch of footage, and I download it. And then tonight, I take the camera back out, and I shoot again. And then I come back, and I download it. What if one of these files has the same name as one of the files, or one of the files tomorrow has the same name as one of the files that I download today? What's going to happen when I copy that in there tomorrow? What's going to happen to the file that has the same name as a new file? It's going to replace it. Now I'm not going to have my original file. This is a very serious problem. This is a very serious problem because that clip is now gone. So one of the major things to do when you're doing these backups and when you're doing this next step, and we'll, we'll get to it in a second, is I always will put the date that I have transferred the files. Okay. So what I'll do is project one and then I'll just do dash, and I like to do it this way so that it lines up better. I'll do year, whoops, underscore, month, underscore, and then day, and I forget what day it is. Okay, 26th. Okay? Now they'll all line up right. Okay? Don't actually write September, because then you do October, you would, might want October to come after September, but alphabetically, the O comes before the S, and so October floats to the top, and September goes to the bottom, you see? So just use the numbers, because the computers use the numbers. So now all I'm going to do, <coughs> and here's the thing. See this little, there's two files. There's an MOD file, and there's an MOI file. The MOD file is 17 megabytes. The MOI file is only 33 kilobytes, which means it's very small. That I file is an information file. We don't need it. We don't need it at all. We only need the MOD files. In fact, the MOI files are going to cause us difficulties later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the MOD files, not the MOI files. Now, if you copy the MOI files, it won't kill you, okay? but it may cause some problems in a second. Now, I only have a few clips, so what I can do is click on it, hold the command key down, and I could just sit here and go through and click on every one. But if you've got, like, 50 clips, that's going to get real tiring very fast, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. So let me show you a little trick. Click on the folder that these are on on the, on the SD card, and then switch your view from whatever view you're in to the list view, like this. And what's cool is, see right now they're listed by name. If I go over here and I click kind, it reorganizes them by the type of file they are. So now, 
I have all my MOD files together and I can just highlight them all and drag them over to the server. <clears throat> it won't take long. This is the stuff that I filmed with you guys last week. On Friday, was it Friday or Thursday that I did it? Friday, I think it was Friday. So it's only 430 megabytes. Now I want you to remember that. How big is it? 430 megabytes, because I want to show you how big those files are going to be when we're done with the conversion process. These are compressed. Final Cut Pro needs an uncompressed video footage to work well. So now here's the cool thing. I've got a backup folder in here. I've got all my movies in there. The good news is that is on the server. That gets backed up daily. So if your computer crashes and you lose your scratch disk, which is what we're about to set up, you still have these. You can always get them back. Okay. The problem is, right now I'm done with the card. So I'm going to yank the card out of the computer. We're going to put it back in the camera and it's going to get erased. So after you're done, these backups are your only thing that you've got as a backup file in case other things go wrong. So you always want to keep this to get. You always want to keep this here on the on the server. So now I can get rid of my, my uh, SD card. I can hit the eject button here, okay, right next to it. Or you could actually just right click on the icon right here and eject it. Once it disappears, you pull it out. Now, the next step that we're about to do, you could do off of the SD card. But I don't want you to do it off of the SD card because these cards have a limited lifetime. And the more you use them, the sooner they burn out. So I don't want you working off of an SD card. It's the same thing for your little USB drives, your little flash drives, okay? They have a limited amount of life. I lose them before, I ever let, before they ever burn out, right? But at the same time, working off of a flash drive, can, it shortens its life. So you want to be careful about that. All right, so what we're going to do if we've got our backup folder here, okay, we're going to convert these files. We're going to go to the digital video folder here, and I'm going to go to a program called MPEG Stream Clip. MPEG Stream Clip is a beautiful program. It is available on the internet for free. It is one of the best and fastest conversion uh, programs I've ever seen. Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. So what we're going to do is, and you can, you can just take one of these clips and you can just drag it right in here. And we should see Trina. Let me see you guys. Okay. Yay. Okay. Now, okay, now here, this is a good point. This is a good point to make. This is the last shot we did, isn't it? Right? When she was walking to the door. But look, it's first. Was that? It's a uh, yeah, yes, you did. Um, but look where it is in the lineup. It's at the top. So again, just to emphasize, I really hate the, uh, the file format thing on these Canon cameras. It's like my only complaint about them. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Because your clips are not in the order that you shot them. It is so frustrating. It is so annoying. In my mind, this is the last clip I shot. It should be down here. But it's not. Anyway, I don't want to go off too much on that. So we've got this camera. Now, can you see, uh, see these little lines around people's heads in the background? Can you see those? Um, see if I, if I enlarge it a little bit. Can you see those little lines that are around people's heads and stuff like that? There's a little bit in her hair too here. We call that interlacing. I'm going to go through a technical description of interlacing with you guys a little bit later on. But we can get rid of that to make this a little bit of higher quality look. This is like, remember how you used to pause a VCR and it would flicker back and forth between frames, okay? That's because VCRs were interlaced. This is the same thing. Where literally every other line horizontally is a different frame. And they kind of interlace them together. It creates smoother motion, but when you pause it, you'll see them. You'll see the little lines. So it's, it's kind of frustrating. We can get rid of it. I'm going to show you. But the biggest problem is, with what I've got right here is right now I can only do one at a time and I could go file and export but what we want to do is we would just want to do them all at once right well because that would just be smarter 
So we're just going to go to batch list under the list menu, and it's just going to come up with this, this, uh, this little um, window. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our backups folder. I'm going to highlight all the video footage, and I'm just going to drag it right in here. Now, actually, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to click Automatic Start. And that means that once it's done adding all the files, it'll actually start with the conversion process immediately. Because sometimes I'll sit there and go, why isn't it started? And it's because it's waiting for me to hit the Go button. But if I do that, it doesn't matter. So once I drag them in there, you're going to get this window is going to pop up. Sometimes it pops up underneath other windows, as it just did for me. So you got to always look for it or the MPEG stream clip icon will start bouncing and you just click on it and this will pop up. You want to export to QuickTime. QuickTime is Apple's um, full resolution, well it's basically their movie player QuickTime um, and we want to export it because we're working with Final Cut Pro. So we're going to click don't check any of these. Don't fix time code breaks and don't join all the files. Don't, don't do that. If you click this, all of this stuff is going to be fired into one big huge clip. We don't want that. Okay? So we're just going to click OK and now comes the complicated part. It's going to ask us where we want to put the uncompressed files. Do not put the uncompressed files on the server. If you do that, when you start editing, you're going to have serious problems because the server will not be able to keep up. These are huge files. Okay? On top of that, you could fill the server really fast. So what we're going to do is Remember, I, we, we created a folder with our name, and then you know, when we were doing the trailers, we go, you go, so you go to the folder with your name in the scratch disk. So click Macintosh hard drive, scratch disk, your name, Final Cut Pro documents, capture scratch. And then you should see the Blue Horizon folder. Don't put them in there. We're going to create a new folder. And this new folder, I'm going to name exactly the same as I named my backup folder. <coughs> Project 1. Uh, dash 2011 underscore 0926. Notice I'm not naming it by the day that I shot the footage. I'm naming it by the day that I imported the footage. That's important. So I create another folder. I click select. Now comes the really complicated part. I have to set this to the codec, which is another word for a compression system that Final Cut Pro can use. So I'm going to click here. And there are just a lot of options. It can be very confusing for people, OK? But if you're using standard definition video, we want the DV, DVC Pro, and TSC. I know you won't remember that tomorrow when you go to do this, so I'll be around to help you. Quality, what do you think? 100%, exactly. Slide that all the way to the right. <clears throat> now. These cameras are all shooting in widescreen, so one of the things you want to do is click your options here. Scan mode. Oh, there's that interlaced word again. We're going to go to, we're going to change, or no, it is interlaced, but our source footage is 16 by 9. Got it? Um, and then we click OK. Now, we've got everything. And then we can check DA interlace the video if you want to, so that way it'll get rid of those little lines. And the sound just stays uncompressed in stereo. Don't change any of these settings. Once you, once you choose the DVC, DVC Pro thing, all you want to do is hit the options and change it to 16 by 9. 16 by 9 is the widescreen. 4 by 3 is square. Do you see the video back here? It looks a little squished, doesn't it? it looks squished side to side. It's too narrow. That's because it's showing it in 4x3 when it's really a widescreen signal. We don't want that. So we click OK. Basically, once we get that, we just, you can set your frame rate, but it should be automatic. You don't have to worry about it. And click to batch. Now it's going to start adding them. It's going to go, it's going to start adding the files. And you can see how it takes a few seconds to add the file. This is one of the reasons why I uh, always select the um, automatic start checkbox here is because as soon as it's done, it'll start converting them for me. But it does take a while sometimes to, to add the files. So it's, it's good to have that checked. If you don't, it's not a big deal. All you got to do is basically just wait. It's pretty fast. 
movie MOV00A is probably one of my bigger clips. One, one of. So you can see it converts them pretty quickly. We don't have to worry too much, okay? Oh, that one's maybe a little bigger. So anyway, you get the idea. Now, I want to show you one last thing before we're done uh, when it's finished converting. Okay, so this is taking a while. So what I'm going to do is as soon as this clip is done, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to nix it. I'm going to tell it to stop. And then uh, I'll, um, I want to show you one, one other thing. So basically, okay, now that this is done, uh, and okay, it's done. Now I'm going to hit stop for that one. So right now it's stopped. What I'd like to do here is I want to show you something. So movie A, okay, this one here, we know it's 17.4 megabytes. If I now go to my scratch disk, my name, Final Cut Pro Documents, Capture Scratch, here's my folder where I'm putting these movies. If I go and hit movie A, look how big it is, 56.6 megabytes. So it's increased in size roughly three or four times, okay, what it, what it was when it was compressed. If I look at, let's see here, movie, oh, movie one. 487 megabytes. Movie one, 150. So you can see that the uncompressed QuickTime movies are far, far, far bigger than the compressed MOD files. Now, the next thing is, some of you may be asking, okay, that's great. How do I now get these videos in to Final Cut Pro? Well, it's actually very simple. You open up Final Cut Pro, and just like you did with the trailer movie, you're just going to file import. But what I want you to do is go file import folders, not import files. And I'll show you why in a second here. It's going, it's going, it's going. Okay. So I'm going to create now. When you open up Final Cut Pro, you're going to. It's probably going to pop up with your old project in there. You can just close the project. So just close window. Whoops. No. Close project. There it is. Sorry, that's my. Yeah, I did not modify it. Stop. And we're just going to make a new project. Boom. Now I can right click and import the folder. And I'm going to go back to the capture scratch here and I'm going to click on that folder and boom. Now what's cool is it comes in as a folder and all my clips that I imported today are here. Again, this is important because tomorrow when I bring my new footage in, and I import it, I again don't want it to be going over top of the old footage. So if I import it by folder, it keeps everything separate because tomorrow I would have a different folder that says project-2011-909-27 instead of 26. And now my footage that I'm imported is all separate, it won't overwrite, and I don't lose any clips. I can tell you right now, I'm not kidding you, I had a student she, well, actually, she wasn't one of mine. She was one of Mrs. Henry's, and I was just helping Mrs. Henry out with one of her classes. She was in tears. She lost a very large portion of her shooting because of this, where the camera, she actually had two different cameras. She shot a large amount with the camera. She imported it. She was editing. And then a week later, she shot over the weekend, she brought the new stuff in, and she saved over top of everything. And she had no backups because she didn't back up the files like I told you to here. She had to reshoot almost half of her project. She was in tears. So I, I, don't, I don't want anyone to cry. I want this class to be fun. So I'm just trying to help you avoid a major catastrophe, okay? I know this may be a little dry and boring, but at the same time, I'm just trying to help you avoid a little catastrophe, okay? Because, again, one little mistake at the beginning of this, not creating a folder with the date on it, not making sure that everything is in its separate folder based upon the day that you import your footage, that little mistake, just that little thing, can literally ruin your whole project. So I really want you to, you know, to keep that up front in your brain when you're doing this tomorrow, okay? Any questions? All right, and see now, I can edit. So I'm just gonna go here and open this up. 
and look at the clip. See, that's that crane. That was that crane clip that we did. See, she doesn't look very happy reading her book. There, she doesn't look very happy at all. But see, that's that's a pretty cool shot with that crane. And then I did the pan. <laughs> nice, ruining my ruining my shot. Yeah, that's a see. That's a better take. But remember, I said I thought it was too close. Definitely too close. Okay, but anyway, now I can start editing and save it, of course, which I'm not going to do. Yay.